It's back to the anticoagulant story again. You have to be on an, if you have a clot, you have to be on an anticoagulant. You can choose not to. The consequence will be a stroke, a blood clot to your lungs that could kill you, uh, or other long-term problems with your legs, or wherever your blood clot is. So that is not a question. It is going to happen. Um, you don't have to take an anticoagulant, but then you're just rolling the dice every day about this. And there are certain parameters you can go through that increase the risk of those adverse events. Uh, and there's various scores. The, if you have atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat, uh, and there's a score called Chad's Vast, you can go on the internet and find the calculator. But it, it selects for the, and, and you get points, and the more points you have, the more of a risk you have of having a stroke, and that risk goes up um, logarithmically with the point. When you have lots of points, it's, you're g highly likely to have a stroke. The, the break point on that is when you get two points, then you, if you're less than two points, your risk of stroke and your risk of anticoagulation are about the same, so that means don't do anything. But when you hit two points or more, your risk of stroke exceeds the risk of any kind of bleeding, so you pick the anticoagulant. So it, it, we've done this in hundreds of thousands of people now. Uh, the numbers are pretty well worked out. And you can do the math and figure out where you, as an, as an individual, sit. Now there are exceptions to that. There are people with allergies and reactions to anticoagulants. They shouldn't be on them, but uh, as a group, uh, th it's pretty easy math. Coumadin has no, no real good antidote. Um, there is Kycentra, which is a, a four-factor uh, prothrombin complex concentrate you can give. It fixes the numbers pretty quickly. Um, but if you've had a major bleed in the head, it's still a major bleed in the head. So um, people have been concerned that they don't want to use the newer agents because of those bleeding risks. But the reality is, is that antidotes don't change the outcomes. But they are, there are antidotes in the pipeline. Um, Idarcizumab is the antidote for dabigatran. Uh, it is about halfway done with its uh, seminal trial, which will hopefully get it FDA approved. Um, and the other one is uh, adexanet alpha, which is a factor 10A inhibitor, which will cover the other NOACs. Uh, it is also uh, going through its phase three trial uh, for FDA approval. Um, both of these drugs will be uh, most likely very expensive, will be only of use of in patients with, with life-threatening bleed. So once again, the intracranial hemorrhage, yeah, somebody with uh, major bleeding that you can't stop otherwise. But for your average person with, with bleeding, the, the thing to do with all of these oral anticoagulants because they have short half-lives is stop them and provide supportive care. Uh, with the exception of you know certain life-threatening bleeds, then you you want to use the antidote. But you know I work in, in uh, at Ben Taub Hospital. It's uh, in Houston, the fourth largest city in the United States, the largest trauma center. Uh, I've never seen uh, a NOAC bleed that I had to use anything other than supportive care in the emergency department. So uh, despite the fact that we all talk about this, the reality is the risk is small, and the standard treatments still are the standard treatments. Uh, despite the fact they might be on a new drug. So I think that uh, that should be reassuring to physicians in terms of, uh, of where we're going with this, but we do have new antidotes coming. In terms of the elderly, that is a risk factor for, for clotting. Um, it's what part of the Chad's Vast score. Uh, the older you are, the greater your risk, the more likely you are uh, to need this, one of these drugs, if you are an AFib or had a, a venous thrombolic event. Uh, so the, the answer is you're going to have to take some drug. If you look at Coumadin historically, you have to take that drug. It doesn't work for four or five days. So you have to bridge. So you have to be on heparin. Well, that's a pain. Um, or, and once you start taking it, it's affected by every time you eat any green leafy vegetables or anything with vitamin K in it. So now you can't eat salad anymore. Uh, that's a problem. And we have to, to monitor your uh, efficacy, your INR, periodically. And initially that's very frequent and then after that it's once a month or so and that's another pain. So here's this complicated mess of a drug which is all we had historically or you can take a pill once a day. So it's actually easier for the elderly person. It, it simplifies their life to be on one of the new agents as opposed to the old agent, to Coumadin. Um, in terms of reversal, uh, these aren't available today but if you needed it it's going to be go to the hospital anyway uh, because if you're bleeding that much we got to look at you. There's a lot more work to be done. There are certain subpopulations which we do not have well validated. Um, the, the cancer population is a, a good example. Uh, people with cancer are, are at very high risk of having blood clots. Uh, historically, um, if you use Coumadin, it didn't work as well as Lovenox. Lovenox uh, is, un, is uh, 
low molecular weight heparin. It's got to be given as a shot. That really is much fun. Uh, patients don't approve it. Um, we don't have any great head-to-head -head comparisons between Lovenox and any of the oral anticoagulants in terms of preventing blood clot in cancer patients. And cancer patients are some of the highest risk blood clot people we have. So, so that's got to happen. Um, there are other examples of subpopulations that need to be more worked out. The acute coronary syndrome population, people are having or about to have a heart attack. Uh, there is a role for anticoagulation in that population. Where the oral anticoagulants fit uh, is, is not well defined in that. Um, and there's people with valves, which the oral anticoagulants haven't worked really well in, and, and we need to, to get more data on dosing and that sort of thing as well. Uh, there's medically ill patients, patient, patients who uh, are at high risk for having a clot, never had a clot, but they've got pneumonia and they're bedridden now for the next three days and they can't move around and they're in the hospital. Um, and so currently we, we poke them with a needle and give them Lovenox all the time or some kind of, of heparin. And, uh, and there's probably a role as well in that. So there's a lot of more subpopulation research to have to go. Uh, the conditions we've worked it out well are, are uh, atrial fibrillation, VTE, meaning uh, venous thromboembolic disease treatment and prophylaxis. Uh, so post-op, uh, you know, if you've had a hip or knee surgery, those people are also candidates for, for these drugs. Um, but like I said, there's a lot more population.